I think normally when we say are we live, we are live, and then there's that weird, awkward beginning, so we're definitely live. Hot. Goodness, I haven't done this for so long, I don't know why. I think I've been quite busy, and I think over the summer I was so engaged with the kids that I didn't really come across any Insta-live moments. But this is, this is a big moment for us because this is my third collection with Tusting, and Tusting has been the most wonderful company for me to get involved with. Um, it's been in the same family for five generations. It goes back to 1875. And the exciting thing is I've got Claire, our top banana, as always, holding the camera. And I've also got Mrs. Tusting, who's joined me here. Of course, when we say Mrs. Tusting, we say five generations. We say 1875. We expect this old lady to come, and she's not. Actually, I think she's probably younger than me, Mrs. Tusting. Um, but to begin with, I thought it might be quite fun to do a little guided tour of my father's bedroom, because it has been a big inspiration for this collection. So I'm going to start with this half of the room and then Mrs. Tusting and I are going to introduce the new bags that is the exciting bit and then I'll do the other half of the room but we, we, we kept saying that this room is so spectacular not only because of course it's been designed by David Hicks but it's so incredibly functional and in the fact that it's everything it's a library it's a bedroom and it's also a bathroom so I know the questions that everybody's been asking on Instagram when I posted yesterday is where is the loo do you want to see where the loo is? Shall we reveal that four minutes in? Are people interested in where the loo is, Claire? Not yet, I'm afraid. Oh, they're not, they're not interested in where the loo no. is? So, I am going to show you that he's designed this brilliant sink, very low, very low, so that it didn't affect the view of his garden. Um, and this is really where my father ended up in life, which was being um, a gardener. Um, I can't think of the word, a landscape artist, really. And what he said was he felt that gardens were actually more interesting than rooms because a room, when he had designed and decorated a room, it was finished and it was complete. But a garden, he felt, was always interesting because it went on, it had different chapters, it grew, it matured, it changed over time. The brilliance also of this garden here at the Grove is that he designed it so that it would be as perfect in winter as it would be in summer, which is interesting because so many gardens that you see um, are good in summer with all of their flowers and plants, um, but this is because it's very architecturally designed. In the winter when all the trees are gone, you've still got these beautiful avenues of all the trees which are surrounding this whole house. This is the house that I grew up in um, from when I was 12. It, it's half of the property. The other property, Britwell House, got sold when my father drank quite a lot of money away. Um, so the house got this is the dower house to the main house. And in fact, my mother has enjoyed 20 very peaceful years here uh, since my father died. But he said in the autumn of his life, he felt that separate rooms were appropriate. So this very much was his room. And my mum has a wonderful orange room, which is just across the corridor. We're not doing that today. We're just doing this room. Don't ask for that room. So in this room where we have the bed and this incredible canopy, actually this fabric, Ashley tells me, um, is from about 1910 and came from my father's parents' house in Sussex. And we're all saying, do you think the fabric is actually from 1910 or do you think he had it recopied? Um, anyone out there who's brilliant and knows the answer to that, tell me. Can a fabric last from 1910, which is used an awful lot? I don't think so. It must have been redone. But originally this was from his parents' house. Um, his library of books, obviously colour coordinated, that's important. Um, and fun, quirky little moments like the cupboard here. That's quite fun. Inside now is my hair dryer. That's not so fun. But isn't that brilliant? That's brilliant. So, you've got your sink, you've got somewhere to put your toothbrush and your toothpaste, and then I'm going to show you where the loo is. Is anyone damn well interested yes, in the loo? Yes, lots. Is? Good, now we're interested in the loo. The loo is, I think, rather amigo. So nobody tell the Oxfordshire Planning Committee. I'm um, inside the cupboard here. So there we go. There, there's the loo. It's quite fun to have that in the bedroom. There we go. David Hicks's loo. David Hicks's loo roll. Claire told me I had to change, loo, uh, move that because it, it, it was inappropriate for the live Instagram. But I don't think it is. I think it's quite fun in there. What are people saying? Mrs. Tustin, you're very quiet in the They're corner. They're fascinated by the loo. They're fascinated mm -hmm. by the loo? Yeah. They want to know if the books are real. I the books that. are all real, and he would sit obviously on the loo and read the books. That's very important. That's what most of us do. <laughs> Is it a pool flush? <laughs> it's not a pool flush. And then over here, you can see we've got the bath at the end of the bed. So really, again, 
Tricky Dad, brilliant designer. Bed, basin, toothbrush, toothpaste, loo and bath. So that is uh, David Hicks's bedroom. And as I said, a room that I've spent quite a lot of time in, particularly more recently um, during COVID, and another of my collections for pomegranate has also been quite inspired by this room because I came over to see my mum from the Bahamas. Um, there was one, you know, that, that moment of opportunity when it opened up and we were actually able to get back on a plane. And I came over here to be with my mum, but of course I wanted to quarantine to make sure that I was safe before seeing her. So I quarantined in this room, so I spent an awful lot of time looking at the 1910 fabric, looking at the David Hicks designed garden and looking at these books and all of the beautiful little motifs on them. And that is what has been the basis of this autumn collection that we've done for Tusting. Jillian, are you going to come over here? Or do I have to keep calling you Mrs Tusting? No, please don't call me Mrs Tusting. Okay, I'm not going to call you Mrs Tusting. Um, so, big reveal. Although I did kind of share quite a bit yesterday. Um, here we go. We love, don't we? We love our sail and our soleil. And this season, we have had inside this fabric clearly heavily heavily inspired by this bedroom on the inside and I just thought these were beautiful beautiful autumnal colors I thought it felt very chic I thought it felt very unique and what we did to make it have a point of difference and, and entirely ours was my son Felix was then able to take all the tiny little motifs that are on the books here Claire if you go up there we can see from the library of books, little tiny motifs along there. And there are other ones down here. If we come down here, you'll see again, there's a David Hicks one there, obviously with the David Hicks logo, but some of these tiny little motifs like that guy there have now been brilliantly fed into the fabric by my elder son, Felix. So we've got the David Hicks 1910 fabric, but then with the little motifs from the book. So that, that is the fabric there. Gillian, will you tell us a bit about how they're made, who's in the workshops, how you've been doing this for so long, how you survived, why are you so young, how many quality streets do you eat? I don't eat any, I, I bring them for your mum. You bring them for my mum. <laughs> she does eat them. She really, really loves quality street, for sure. Can you see, Claire? Or are we hiding? Uh, we, we've got the window behind us, is it okay? Yep, yeah, you're good. Yeah, cool. Brilliant. Um, so Someone will tell me. These, these bags have been enormously popular with the two previous collections, which is why they're here again, because you love them. You just love them. So they're totally different again in terms of how they look, um, but all the same strength and, and, and uh, structure, if you like, in a completely different look. So this is um, really strong 18 ounce canvas, which is made in Scotland. And it's the darkest, 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 sort of soft black. It's almost vaguely chocolate it's just not not like um you know uh, something really harsh it's it, it goes beautifully with the i mean it's really it's taken from the fabric you're doing very well um you're doing very well when i when i used to sell for qvc um and hsm which are now i think are combined um uh, i i got trained for it because apparently you have someone's attention for three seconds so you have to have your words ready just like you said i loved soft black i thought that was brilliant when i was first trained for it have i told you this before I'm glad I'm not boring you. When I was first trained to go on to QVC and I knew I had, I think it's seven minutes of a woman's mm. time, and they told me you had to think of all the names like soft black, like cotton white, and all the names that we've been discussing. The man who was training me said, I'm so sorry, I've got to go, I've got the Pope next. <laughs> he went off to train the Pope. Well, we've got your mother next. We've got, we've got my mum next. Okay, okay. So, so keep so going. So all the same, the bag is the same. The, 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 this leather is fantastic. It's very, very... Um, cutting edge tannage, which means it can be very, very white without being coated and plastic covered on top. Most white leather is horrible. Good, I like that. We don't have horrible leather. Come up there. This white leather I know, people are saying horrible. it's not good lighting. They, okay. Just, okay. they can't see the bag. Well, that's what colour. we've got to do. We move into yeah. here. And I'm going to move my horrible hands out of the way. Here, show that side, which is all nicely clipped down. Um, and, and Gillian, keep going. I'm letting Gillian do all the talking, which is difficult for me because I do <laughs> like to talk, as we might know. Um, and and I have, when we talk about this cotton colour leather, mm. we have spent a lot of time choosing it. Like Getting that. just the right yeah. white to go with yeah. the black and the lovely print on the inside. And it's important because these, these details really matter to India. And we had to find that beautiful white in a 
leather that we considered was good enough to be a tusting bag and we have and and it's 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 wonderful and and you can see how soft it is because these little little folds and things show that's basically it would go crispy and crusty if it was a typical white leather it's not it's a really beautiful soft warm white leather and the whiteness is because it's dyed through rather than painted on top which is what you would typically find of a white leather and again i think one of the beautiful things about working with a company like tusting uh, a one of a kind company as far as i can make out um, is that the fact that you make everything in your workshops and so you're able to make the bags on demand so they're very limited we never go over a certain amount but each bag is numbered sorry claire you've gone all the way over there oh. Each bag is numbered, and here we have the first bag. Can you see it's got a lovely little one Number there, one. which is in my horrible scruffy handwriting, but when it comes out in the gilt, it looks lovely. This is the first bag. So whatever bag you have or you order will come with your number. I'm going to nip downstairs and grab my mum's handbag so we can show messaging, okay. which we're going to put inside. You're going to talk about this, and you're going to talk about the sandwich that goes in it. Where's it gone? Inside's in here. It's inside. Because we do love our sandwich and talk about this and why I wanted that to show that everything is handmade. Okay. I'm getting the other bag. Okay. I'll go here where I think the light is. Oh, this, this light is better? Okay. This light is better. So we have, we had one sandwich with the previous collection, which was the, the, the denim and, and, the, and the dark brown. Hugely popular. Silly name. Fantastically silly name. India's humour, which we love. And everything before has had the red, the red hand-stitched cross on it to show the hand crafting that goes into these bags. Red would have um, been a little bit bright on these, so we've gone for a really muted one that's the self-colour of the stitching of the bag. And in the, um, um, in the, where's the tan one? It's coming, we'll show you that later. Um, it's also self-coloured. So it, this is the full extent of the external branding. Which I love, I hate branding. So I just want to quickly show my mum's bag. Tusting are allowed to do that because it's their brand, not mine. So they've got that. And on the inside here, you can see a message that I had engraved. What do you call it? Embossed? It's embossed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Embossed onto the inside of the bag. So what we're t saying is that you can have a message done. Yeah. Um, and we'll, if, if, we can, if you need a message, we can put an extra piece of leather on down here. Um, so if you want to the say go. happy birthday or your initials go there, if you don't want to go quite for the message. What are you looking cross about, Claire? I'm not. Good. So, messaging, we love it all. Personalisation yeah. is huge. Yeah. To my mum. she does mama. this bag, doesn't she? It's she loves her bag. All the time. But we're not selling this bag. No, we're not. We're not. But you could get this bag. It is, of course, on the site. We're selling this wonderful bag. So, for those of... For anybody who's just joined us, this is the autumn collection that we're doing for Tusting. Tusting, fantastic. Five generations, same family. All made in their workshops. Not in their worships, which apparently is the word that I misspelt on Instagram. When but I you can make. worship the workshop. We're going to worship the worship workshop. Um, and the bags are clearly very, very heavily influenced uh, by this marvellous room of my father's. So we've got a sail. We've got a soleil. You've done your sandwich. Yeah, done sandwich. And that shows how it clips into the to yep. both of these. Oh, so well done. Some of us like a clip. You see that. Some of us don't. Okay. But some of us can have a clip if they want in there. And it's good, actually, in this one. This I do understand, Julian. Jill and I are always fighting over this little thing. Do we need it or do we not? But I think it is a very clever idea that it's in there. So when you're scrounging around for your goodies, it's in there. Now, something I think that is very, very exciting for me, which we've worked on for quite a while, is, is finding a bag that I want to carry forever that's unbelievably simple. And doing something simple is very, very difficult. Like closing the door, you wouldn't just close the door so we don't have to like the squeaky, the squeaky the ghost. ghost. So, this bag is our latest bag. I'm going to put him here so he gets place of honour right now. Um, I love this bag. Absolutely love this bag. It's called Savannah. Named after the house that my father designed in the Bahamas. Yes, there is an awful lot about my family, my heritage, the wonderful legacy that I come from because it's irresistible not to go back to that and be influenced and inspired by it. My father built this incredible house in the Bahamas on neighbouring island where I live, on Windermere Island, and he designed it like an Egyptian mausoleum. The point of it was it was incredibly clean in its lines. It was a very, very, very simple house. And that has really inspired this, ha this bag. It's very, very simple. There is no hardware on it whatsoever, which of course, gives it a beautiful, sustainable story to it as well. I love the details, like the stitching here. 
so that you can see again the company that's been doing this is hand stitched everything here obviously these have been hand painted it's unbelievably simple even the bottom I didn't want to have the the feet because I felt that that was going to detract from the simplicity of it and I wanted to keep it as naked as it possibly could be so it's totally unlined which again I love and I think gives it a real luxurious feel um, I love the way we're seeing this this beautiful bag and then we've got my father's bath plug in the background there um, but that's okay um, we've got open pockets here for simplicity also to keep these lines so clean but you do need to have your wallet your phone your makeup in something so if you'd like to add on a uh, a sandwich in this colour. Obviously, we've also got it in this colour. There are the two options. Two options. I think this is incredibly lovely. Um, and then again, if because I wanted to keep this so clean, we didn't have the what do you call it? A lanyard. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? A lanyard. A lanyard. lanyard. Yeah. So Gillian has rather brilliantly done this so that we can... Um, she does have a husband who actually is Mr. Tusting, but Gillian and I are taking all the credit today, aren't we, Gillian? Yeah. Naturally. Naturally. So Alistair was absolutely no interest in this at all. It's all about us. Um, so that's rather fun. So if you're somebody who feels you want to have something for a zip, because my mother's always saying, Dad, where is the closure? Um, here is that. But I'm someone who just loves this. I have been using this bag probably a month now. This is the bag I've been using for a month. And when Gillian was coming over today... I said, will you bring a new one? She said, no, let's use yours to really show. And I've been lugging it around. I'm going to put up some stories soon showing that it was with me in Sardinia. Um, it's been with me in Portugal. Um, I've had a really lovely summer. Um, it's been with me in London. It's been with me in Oxfordshire. I filled it full with my children's mm -hmm. crap. Um, I filled it full of my own crap. Um, and it hasn't in any way, the form hasn't changed. And the lines haven't. It's just Somebody's asking how sturdy is it if it's unlined? Completely, your completely and utterly. I have literally everything inside of this. I have heavy computers. I've got David Hicks books. I have absolutely everything I carry around this. I cannot love this bag more. Um, and for me, it's a completely timeless bag. I went to the opticians in London, if you're there and on. Thank you, Finley, because now I can see. Well, of course, I can't see because I've got the glasses on because I can't even find the glasses. But they, the, the optician said, where is your bag from? And I love that. I thought that's just fantastic. She said as soon as they go live, she's going to order one. So I hope the optician from Finley is online right now ordering the bag. Uh, oh, I've got the glasses from Finley in here. It's perfect. It's all going together wonderfully. Um, so your little sandwich inside to tie back to the story of the bedroom in here. Are we answering questions as we go along? Does anybody have anything that they'd like to ask that's not related to this? Because then we're going to move on to the other side of this room. We have, we have the lovely Lucy in the office who is answering, answering questions everything. online. Um, if we've missed any, we will follow up and we'll try and, we'll try and get back. We're trying to record all the questions, so hopefully if you don't get one during the live, you'll still get one later on. And I am now just showing you the size because I think that's also always important. Can you see, Claire? Am I in the bad yep. light, in a good light? Um, look how lovely they look. Also with the boots, just launched the boots too. For Penelope Chill, there's another wonderful small British brand. I am so lucky to be working with these wonderful brands right now. It's not fair. Claire's standing there, she's just laughing at questions. So, this shows you the size of it. Also, people often ask about putting it over your shoulder, um, and there it is over the shoulder. Um, I don't like long straps. I know you have customers who like long straps, and they are very welcome to go and peruse your site and find ones with longer straps if they want. I like bags that literally just come straight there or that I can hold here comfortably. This came on the bus with me to London yesterday, the Oxford Tube. It worked very well on and off all around London yesterday. So I think it's just, for me, it's just the most beautiful length of strap. Completely simple. Are we getting lots of hearts and claps or are people just saying, oh? No, people are loving it. Uh, quite A couple of people are asking about the sustainability of the leather. Will Tusting. Good. I would like that. Julian to talk about oh, right. that because okay. we've got a whole thing on that. Yeah. One mm -hmm. thing I'd like to say, which was exciting, I'm sort of doing this slightly <laughs> intimidating Chinese Chinese angels. Is it Chinese <laughs> angels? That's slightly intimidating, bossy. Um, uh, one thing I will say is um, the site went live with my new collection and collaboration for Tusting um, about an hour ago. Three of these have already sold. Um, these are not, this is, this is a, 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 a price point that you would think about and that you would want to know you're getting a timeless bag. So I thought that's fantastic. Three have already sold. Um, is it so heavy? No, not at all. No, super not at all. Yeah. Super light. And I think that's good too. Of course, then you tend to overload it. But I always overload everything. So will you talk about the sustainability? 
Let's look at the bag. Claire, come back, come over here where we can see. It's very confusing because you've got me. I know, but just check out for questions. You can sit on the bed. People have asked you to sit on the bed. Sit on the bed. Why don't somebody you? ask you to sit on the bed? Well, why don't you talk about to, you talk about this and you can get up close on the details of it while Gillian talks about the sustainability of the yeah. leather. You want to look at the, the look at the back? Oh, okay. Got it. Um, this particular bag, we um, all, all of our leather that we use in all of our bags comes from tanneries that are certified by the Leather Working Group, which is a really important global organisation, which basically is working incredibly hard to make sure that the, um, the leather that is produced in their tanneries that they certify has the least impact on the environment in the, in the process of being made and is all traceable. So basically, the animals which have which have been grown for meat, um, their hides are a byproduct, and they would go in landfill if it wasn't for people wanting to make handbags out of them or other things, shoes and so on. Um, these animals are not raised for their leather; they're raised for their meat. So, in taking the hides, leather is an upcycled material. It would be in landfill otherwise. And the Leather Working Group is making sure that these tanneries work to the very best environmental standards so that no other rubbish is done to the world in the process of creating the leather. And then we've taken this gold standard leather, this is the best that any of these tanneries can make, it comes from Spanish tannery, from Spanish animals, the number of miles that it's, they've travelled is very minimal, and then the leather comes to us. And in this bag, we've chosen to make a bag that has no metal parts in it. And really, it doesn't have anything else. It has it has a little bit of thread and it has a little bit of fine rope in the handles, and that's it. So all of this um, is metal free, and at the, it will last incredibly well because it's very well made leather. It's full grain leather. It will stand up to pretty much anything you throw at it. And if after thirty years or three, if you are really brutal to it, however long you know it it, it takes it's worn out, you've got options. We can repair it. Um, you could top it up and upcycle it into smaller pieces. Or ultimately, if, if you've you know, really seen it to trash, it's an organic material. It will go back in the ground and it will go in landfill and it will rot down more slowly than an animal hide would because it's been preserved into leather, but it will still rot down and ultimately will be returned, the carbon in it will be returned to the atmosphere. It's a whole circular process. And I mean, you can go a lot into the environmental story of it, but that's it in a nutshell. And for us, that wasn't in a nutshell. Okay, that was like a that hot was dog. A, hmm. It was a hot okay, dog. Okay, sorry. Too that, many words. Not at all. And you're competing with me for too many words. Not at all. It was utterly yeah. convincing, and I'm glad that you heard it from <laughs> the horse's mouth. Um, no, but it is utterly convincing, and 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 a very very important message because. When I want a simple design, I also want a simple story that goes with it. And the point is, this is a You want to feel good about, about, about owning it, about using it, about using it for as long as you can, and the price at the first place, because that's what the price is getting you. It's getting you this really beautifully made leather and the craftsmanship and the guarantee that goes with it that we're going to look after it. And India's guarantee that she wouldn't put her name to something that she didn't believe in anyway. So yeah. um, it, it's... And the same thing with this bag as well. If you want to gift it to somebody wives if you're asking your husbands for this uh, they can write a very romantic lovely message which can be embossed on the inside here um, and again there are lots of different ways of embossing messages you could have a blind emboss which is like this which of course again i love because it's the simplest and i think the chicest there we go so you could have your message blind embossed uh, you could have it done on this side um, where it would be a uh, completely beautiful plain canvas in which to paint your message as such. Uh, or you could have it done in the gilt and you have different colored gilts, don't you? you have rose gold, 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 uh, bronze gold, all sorts of different options there. Um, so, you've seen, we've launched our cell, we've launched our soleil, we've launched a sandwich and now we've got the savannah. To cap all those S's off, we've got squirrel. We've called this our squirrel color. Um, that, that's how bonkers we are. We sat this morning again, what are we gonna call it? Um, I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour of the other half of the room for those of you who've had enough about sustainable bags and want to know a bit more about David Hicks. So let's go head over this way and then we're going to come up back for a little round up on the bag. Who came up with the name for the sandwich? Well that's also because we did have the snatch the first time we launched and we did laugh to ourselves about our snatch. Can I borrow your snatch? Can I take into a snatch? 
then we felt we need, maybe we need to mature a little bit. Um, so we went for the snatch to the sandwich. So, Claire, you might want to go back a okay. bit and see both sides of this room, and then we can come forward to see both. I do hope my brother Ashley is not watching. Um, I doubt he is. He's got much better things to do than look at women launching handbags. But he would know all of the history to all of this, and I know only little bits. Um, but his book, um, the David Hicks Scrapbooks, um, show you a lot more about these cupboards. But brilliantly, my father felt that um, in the Gothic designed cupboards, which are very easily made, they're just bits of plywood, um, and then he sticks on these little, um, these little circular things here. One or two have fallen, fallen off. Um, this is my mother's side, so it's like a scrapbook in 3D. 3D in real life, I guess, and that is my father's side. So if we have a quick look inside my mother, in my mother's side, I don't know how the lighting's going to go. You can see a lot of her life up here. The cups she won when she was riding a great deal out in Malta. Um, there are my grandparents with the Queen and Prince Philip. Um, that wasn't Malta, although they had spent a great deal of time together when they were in Malta. Um, my grandfather's passport, that is rather fun. I love that there. Uh, my beautiful grandmother in her St. John ambulance uniform. What is the goblet? They are cups that my mother won no, when she sorry, was racing. This one. Oh, that goblet? <laughs> oh, jeepers. God, I knew, I knew the answer to the first one. Not sure about this goblet, but is that a coconut? Is that a coconut? Um, mm. We will find the answer to that, and I will let everybody know at another time. Um, I love this of my grandparents there in front of the car, isn't that wonderful? So it's such a brilliant idea. And my grandfather's luggage label is there. Um, a picture of Nehru, who my grandmother loved, who my mother loved, who everybody adored, and little objects going along. The Russian side of the family there, painted Easter eggs. And then we get down to a lot of the Russian side of the family here at the bottom. And these are the buttons that my grandfather's staff would wear, which I'm dropping all over the floor, which we'll pick up afterwards. The M of B for Mount Batten of Burma. It's rather fun, isn't it, there? But it's such a fun way to keep parts of your past and perhaps some of your present. And over on this side... Hold on, that's, that's naughty Ashley Hicks. Fat India Hicks and Edwina looking rather lovely. Um, and then me on my wedding day, because I get to stay in this room when I come to stay with my mum, which I try to do as much as I can. Um, this side is my father's side. Um, not so much royal stuff, but wonderful stuff. Um, up top there, a photograph from Richard Nixon. Well done, Claire. Do you think there are people asking interesting questions? Um, or are they they're, just... They're just loving it all, frankly. Well, that's so nice. That's so nice, and I love my father's... Somebody's um, asking if you have your own tiara. No, actually, and I wasn't able to wear a tiara until last year, because you can only wear a tiara once you're married. And, of course, I was a, a not an honest woman. I was a dishonest woman living in sin until last year. Um, but my mother felt that possibly we didn't need a family tiara, and so it was sold. I, I, I think she's right. Aren't these beautiful? These are all painted Easter eggs, or paint, little painted eggs, or no one's cracked over there. And they're all, that, those are the, that's Britwell where we used to live. That's Classybourne Castle in Ireland, but he's got cracked there. Um, that's also the monument at Britwell. That's the fireplace at Britwell. And my father's just put them in these funny little perspex napkin rings. Uh, he was kind of brilliant with his ideas. Um, the Queen and my father. There, that's rather fun. There. I'm going the wrong way. Thank you. Um, okay, I love Claire. She gets so involved, she stops to read things on the way. Gosh, I can't remember that. And as she's going to know. Um, I like this little guy because it reminds me so much of my childhood. There we go, the little, the little bunny inside. Neither would I. Wants to dust that cupboard inside the house. <laughs> um, and this I absolutely remember from my childhood, the three little piggies, um, and you wound them up. Does anybody else remember these kinds of toys? 
Um, I'm not sure if this little piggy's going to want to be wound up now, but when you wound them up, he would play, he would drum, uh, and he had a violin. Oh no, he's got the violin. What did the third little piggy have? I can't remember. Um, there's an awful lot of me saying I can't remember, which Ashley isn't very good. Ashley's Mark Hampton eggs. Oh, thank God Ashley's here. Thank God. Could Ashley answer Ashley, the Ashley question could of be here. who that is, please? Mark Hampton, who oh. our American audience will know very well, is a great American decorator. Alexa Hampton is a good friend of Ashley and I. She is also a brilliant decorator. Mark Hampton did the White House. Am I right, Ashley? Our dad did the bowling alley. It'll take a minute for anything. It's rather fun, this. I stand in the room, Ashley's in the next door cottage. He can, he can, can relay back and forth. Um, uh, we're going to quickly find out who this is. Ashley's going to be so cross that I don't know who that is either. Uh, uh, Claire's back over here. And that's my father's, my father's mother with my sister Edwina. And isn't this brilliant here? This is a letter written. So it would, you would read it that way. Then you would turn it and read it that way so as to save paper. Isn't that fantastic? Absolutely beautiful. Right. Have we admired the Gothic chairs beside the bar? Uh, Ashley says, who is who? Who is who? Him above the fireplace. Oh. <laughs> Not the fireplace, above the cabinet. There, him, Ashley. Who is who? Who's him? It's Ash is at the Wizard of Oz it's behind. Quite a delay, Ash is at the Wizard of Oz behind the screen. He'll he'll appear <laughs> soon. Right, we can probably get back to business here. What you should do is put three totes on the bed, I think, so that they all sit together. You can see the relative sizes. Right, that's what we're going to do. And then someone's just bought a Savannah. Oh, wonderful! Right. I'm so pleased you bought the Savannah. Um, so I think Julian's right because it's also getting quite dark in here for some reason. Um, we're going to put the, be the bags on the bed. I'm going to try and get a little bit more light in here so everybody can see exactly what's going on. Oh. And we've got our one, two, and then our third bag right there. You see how lovely those autumnal colours are, our squirrel colours. Um, since Ashley's on, or not on even, he's just done a, a rather fun book on Knoll. Don't ask me anything more than that, because it's not about a handbag. Um, but he's just photographed beautifully. He's, in, he's very annoying, because not only is he very well read and he knows all the history, he also can photograph and design and draw and do all of that. Um, I, I can just about get up and get dressed. But what is interesting is when I came home into my mother's drawing room, she has a round table and she puts the important books that she's just read on the table. All of Ash's on the table, none of mine. None of mine, because mine really belong in the loo, because they take about 20 minutes reading the loo. Um, so, back to bags, we've got our sail, our lovely big oversized sail. Uh, good for waitrose, good for the logs, good for picnics, good for picking up the kids from school and putting all their rugby stuff inside it. Um, good for going away on holiday, good for summer, good for winter, good for autumn. And we've got our more considered size in the soleil here, which has always had our distinct detail of the little studs there, there and there. Um, this one has been incredibly popular. And you can still fit a lot in those. Yeah. Mrs. Tustin says you can yeah. still fit a lot in those. We've got our sandwich that goes, and this is our cotton white, because white is very hard to find, for perfect white. As you've seen, our sandwich has the beautiful um, tone on tone stitching to show that these are handmade in the Tustin workshops. And then we have our Savannah, our beautiful new, incredibly clean, um, Savannah handbag um, and if you want you can also have a sandwich to go with your Savannah sounds absurd and if you want to have an extra little bit there you can which will hold that in place so you can find your shit quickly I think that's really what that point is so sail solo Savannah and our sandwiches Gillian anything else no no I think fantastic Hopefully everybody, if they um, like to look, learn more, there's lots of information on the website and obviously the bags are there to uh, be bought. And to we, buy. We're, we're, they are being made right now um, and we'll start shipping them next week. And just tell us one quick thing, mm. because England is in utter disarray with our, with our finances, but this is of course to the benefit of our American customer out there, that actually if you're buying these in American dollars, you're protected from this uh, storm we, we have going on. Um, and when, wherever you are in the world, mostly, um, I think most of our customers are in, are in the States, and 
um, prices are like visible the dollars and the price that you see is the delivery price so you're protected from all the ups and downs um, and um, you just uh, get basically all of the duties taxes delivery everything on price no nasty surprises by the, uh, the, the DHL man when he rings your doorbell brilliant nobody likes a nasty surprise uh, thank you as always for taking the time everybody's incredibly busy so I'm always incredibly appreciative for anybody who bothers to come on and listen to me rabbiting on um, I'm particularly appreciative to my mum who lets us do this in our house and to my dad who designed it all. Um, the David Hicks garden, the David Hicks bedroom, uh, the David Hicks man-made child uh, and my brother who pops in and out with, with, the, with the interesting facts. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you and please shop uh, sustainable bags at your disposal. Brilliant.